we're meeting all domestic content requirements, we're meeting FIAC requirements, and we're planning to going into the future. That's 40% tax credit per system. That's solar and battery. Who's pre-purchasing now to make sure that they lock in that equipment and qualify for those credits indefinitely? This is definitely going to be where the industry is moving towards. Uh, because that 30% tax credit is still going to be uh, available there. The smarter way to go solar. Hi everyone, Joe Ordia here for Solar Surge, and today we're coming back to you from RE Plus, the International Solar Conference here in Las Vegas. This afternoon, I'm joined by Andy Newbold from Enphase, and uh, Andy just wanted to catch up with you and chat about kind of at high level what's going on in the industry. I mean, I feel like we've been just on a roller coaster. They, they call it the solar coaster. But I mean, at the beginning of the year, it was tariffs and then it was, you know, the loss of the tax credit, you know, perhaps prices going up. Uh, I guess, to tell us, how do you see the solar market uh, here in the U.S. in 2025 and, and going into 2026? Yeah, I mean, we actually don't even like the term solar coaster because it makes it feel like we're not in control. And like, Actually, for one of the first times ever, we feel like we're in a little bit of control, you know, like at least we have some certainty. We have that going for us for the most part. Um, you know, as you know, 25D tax credits phasing out at the end of the year. So, you know, we're hearing from our installers and our partners that there's a lot of work happening between now and the end of 2025. Um, that's the priority right now. No one's lacking for business at, at this point in sure. time. It's a big drive. And so, you know, right now what we're making sure we're doing is uh, supporting those customers and those installers, making sure they have all the supply they need. We have, you know, we, we're, our message is very clear. Is we have as much supply as they could possibly need. We have domestic content. We're meeting all domestic content requirements. We're meeting FIAC requirements, and we're planning to going into the future. So Enphase is open for business, and we have the supply that our installers are looking for. And you know, beyond 2025, as you know, I think there's going to be a big transition into third-party owned leases and PPAs. Uh, so we have a lot of work to do. We we work with thousands of installers across the country. Um, and we view it as uh, part of our mission to help, you know, help those installers transition uh, into this new uh, financing era. Uh, so, you know, that involves communicating with them, ensuring that they're getting on these TPO platforms. There's a lot of great TPO providers out there, um, you know, training them on how to sell TPO products to consumers and working with them on that. And also, you know, looking at really innovative financing opportunities and helping, you know, helping support those, bring those to market, make sure Enphase products are a part of that. Um, so a lot of exciting stuff. I think a lot of people are super optimistic about where we're going. Um, and we're just glad that we can, we have a little bit of certainty and we can move in a, in a direction as, a, as an industry. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's unpack some of that because you touched yeah, on a lot of different a lot there, issues. Yeah. <laughs> but, but basically we, we know that the 25D individual solar tax credit is going away at the end of this year. Um, so if, if you are going to finance your solar power system, there's a way that if you finance your solar power system with a, with a TPO product, that TPO stands for third party ownership, like a solar lease, that the lease company can still capture part of the tax credit and then hopefully pass that on to the homeowner in the form of a lower monthly payment. Um, however, in order to qualify your equipment to be financed with one of those TPO lease products, what's, what's the requirement there? Yeah. So. You know, we work with TPO providers across the board. They want to make sure, you know, domestic content's a huge part of that. They want to make sure that we're FIAC compliant, which FIAC stands for Foreign Entities of Concern. That means that, uh, you know, the government's basically put uh, restrictions on, you know, equipment coming from uh, certain countries that are deemed to be of a concern to the United States, right? So, um, you know, China, for example, equipment from China can be disqualified. Um, you know, uh, uh, with regards to FIAC. And so, you know, a lot of those TPOs are making sure, are these products going to be compliant? Do they meet the 60% threshold of products that are not, you know, components that are not coming from a foreign entity of concern? Um, and then in addition, are they going to be able to qualify for the domestic content bonus credit? Because for a TPO, they get the 30% ITC, right? Then they get an extra 10% and domestic con content bonus credit. That's 40% tax credit per system. That's solar and battery. And both of our, our microinverters and our battery products qualify. That's real 
serious money. And you know, so a lot of those TPOs are making sure that you know, companies like Enphase are able to meet those requirements and bring that value to them. Great, great. So, so installers that are wanting to offer a TPO-based financing, they're covered with Enphase micros, batteries, all that's... Absolutely. And what we're also seeing is, you know, a lot of safe harboring is happening right now. I'm sure you've heard the, the term safe harboring go around. Um, yeah, you know. but you know, for, for those that are out there that may not be as familiar with our, our industry jargon, what, is it, what does it mean to, to safe harbor your project or to safe harbor your, your equipment? And that, this, is, this is something that the third party owned operators are responsible for. It's not necessarily something that even individual installers need to worry about. Certainly not something homeowners need to worry about. But the, the third party owned operators who are going to own these systems are all they, they are allowed to buy equipment in advance so that they can qualify for the tax credit beyond, you know, so for third party owned, 2027 is when that tax credit sunsets. Okay. So they need to save, they have until July of now, there's a lot of dates and a lot of stuff, but they have until July of 2026 to safe harbor that equipment and qualify for tax credits indefinitely. So they can, once they safe harbor it, they can use that equipment and qualify for tax credits indefinitely until they run out. So we're seeing big pull ends on that. So if you're an installer, you're gonna to wanna to talk, and, and, and as you're learning more about TPO products, you're gonna to wanna to talk to your, your, the TPO provider that you're working with, make sure that they have a really solid supply of product as far as the eye can see, so that you can ensure that your business is able to use those products that qualify for maximum tax credits for many years to come. Can you tell us wh which of the TPO companies are the largest buyers of this, this safe harbor equipment right now? Like who's, who's pre-purchasing now to make sure that they lock in that equipment and qualify for those credits indefinitely? Yeah, so we haven't disclosed some of our uh, specific partners who have done the safe harbor, but you know, just speaking generally, we work with all TPO providers in the market. Um, you know, I, I can't think of one that we don't work with you know, so, you know, whether it be Goodleap or Sunrun or IGS or Palmetto, all these different, t there's so many different ones. And I know that they all have active safe harbor strategies. We haven't disclosed who we've done safe harbor deals yet, uh, safe harbor deals with yet, um, but just know that all of those TPOs, all the major providers are doing, are, are, are active in this um, and trying to prepare themselves for uh, what's to come. Makes sense. Well, Andy, what is, what is your take on the future of solar financing? Obviously, we've seen a number of solar financing companies come apart here over the past couple yeah. of years, and uh, of course, there's some issues of you know hidden fees and things of that sort. But you know, to the extent you can share with us, what's your take on the future the future of solar financing, and what do you think we're going to see on on the the cash and loan side of the the business? I think it's really exciting. You know, uh, there, there there's a couple of things to break down here, right? Like cash and loan, straight up, isn't going away. There's a lot of activities underway to bring costs down, um, uh, you know, customer acquisition costs, marketing, equipment costs. We're working on bringing that down. There's a lot of different ways you can attack the 30% that's going away. And I think that cash and loan products are still going to be an attractive offer. You know, right now, maybe it's a six to eight year return on investment. It might go up to 10 years, right? But it's still, go these are 25 year systems in many cases. It's cash and loans not going away. That's going to be a thing. Installers just need to, and, and, and manufacturers need to work on getting the cost down in these systems to make up for that 30% tax credit that's going away. That's one. On the TPO side, this is definitely going to be where the industry is moving towards. Uh, because that 30% tax credit is still going to be uh, available there. So what's exciting, you know, we're hearing a lot about some really innovative financing there. So you know about a, a, a standard lease or a power purchase agreement where an installer uh, will put a system on, the third party owned company owns it, uh, receives the 30% tax credit, and then the homeowner's paying a monthly payment on their lease. They're leasing a system, it's just like a car lease, right? Now, there's a prepaid lease option. That's what I have on my house. This is where in, they condense, instead of uh, paying a lease payment every month for 20 years, they condense it and I pay upfront cash, call it $15,000, one payment. The system's owned and operated by Sunrun, in my, in my case, for, and I have a 25-year system. They replace the battery every 10 years, so I get three batteries 
and a solar system for 15 grand. That, I paid one upfront payment, that's it. Now, what if I don't have 15 grand, right? Well, you can take a loan out and pay for the lease, the prepaid lease with a loan, right? So we think that there's gonna be a lot of people that wanna do standard lease because they wanna leave their money in the market, et cetera, whatever their reasoning is. There's gonna be now this option for prepaid lease. There's gonna be option for loan to prepaid lease. And I think that is going to help, you know, once we get installers up to speed on this and once installers learn to sell this to customers, that's gonna be a very attractive financial product that I think could help bridge the gap as 25D fades out and TPOs and the 48E tax credit comes to life. Um, you know, for all those people who wanted to do cash and loan, this is a great option for them. And, you know, there's even some talk of uh, you know, lease to own, right? So people do want to own their system for a variety of reasons. They want to be able to update it along the way, whatever it yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. You'd, you'd, you'd lease it for five years. I'm just using an example. There's no products like this available right now, but you'd, own, you'd lease it for five years and then they transfer ownership uh, and you continue making loan payments or you pay that cash payment up front. So lease to own, lease to, loan to lease, lease to lease. Lots of great options. <laughs> Andy, Andy, okay, I've got to say now, this this sounds like a, you know, kind of a typical American way of doing things. We've got this, these very creative financing schemes. You mix this lease with the, that loan and whatever, and you, you get your solar. But uh, I guess the question that I would have is, and, and I understand if you can't say specifically because some of these are your partners, but you know, what is the risk to the homeowner if one of these TPO operators goes down? You know, we, we've seen SunPower had trouble. We've seen Sonova went down recently. So I, that's the only concern I would have as a homeowner is, you know, if, if I'm in a, in a prepaid contract with a, with a TPO operator and I've prepaid them, but they go out of business, now do I have to hire another service provider to, to, to repair that system if something were to break down? You no, know, or, or does the homeowner just take, owner, take ownership and control of it because the, the TPO provider is not there to enforce its ownership? It's a really great question. You know, I think there's a lot of different ways that those types of things can play out. And we've seen a lot of different ways it's played out from, you know, Sonova and SunPower and beyond. Um, you know, I think really as a consumer, as a homeowner, as an installer, as you're selecting a TPO provider, you need to do your research and look at their balance sheets, uh, talk to them, you know, feel confident in, in them as a company because you do want them to be around for 25 years while you're, owning and operating this, while well, you have this system operating on your house. It's very important. Now, even if one of these TPOs does go out of business, you know, these assets get put into bankruptcy filings, someone purchases that, you know, debt collectors, whatever, eventually, you know, those customers are gonna be taken care of in some way or another, right? So I, I don't think anybody's gonna be stranded in those situations. Uh, I've never seen that before, but you still want, you don't, it's not ideal, you don't want that to happen, so I say, do your research, make sure the company you're working with is solid, not some fly-by-night company, and that you feel confident that they're gonna be around 2025 20, years because it's a legitimate concern. Yeah, no, I think that's, and then let's, let's leave it like that, because you know, I've said it in the past, folks, like solar is not one of those things you wanna shop on cheapest price. Yes. The question is, who's the best long-term partner for me? Whether you're talking about your equipment supplier, whether you're talking about your financing company, but you know, you're entering into a long-term relationship. You, if, you, if you think of that system as a, as a 15, 20, 30-year system, you're basically talking about a, a 15, 20, or 30-year partnership with those counterparties. So make sure that you go into it with that attitude, not what, what can I get cheapest on day one, but who, who do I have the most confidence in to be a good partner with me long-term? Well, Andy, any, anything else that the audience should know about, I guess, the state of the solar industry, solar policy changes? You know, I think another really exciting thing um, that folks should be paying attention to, installers, homeowners, is, you know, we're seeing a lot of the sort of an emergence of what's known as virtual power plants. Some call it distributed power plants. You know, the idea that these solar and battery assets on individual homes can be aggregated together and um, be a resource to the grid. So you can imagine 25 homes in a neighborhood, a utility says, I need power at 6 p.m. from those home batteries, and they all dispatch at the same time. They're functioning as a power plant, but they're decentralized. Really cool concept. There's a lot of value in that. Utilities pay really good money for those, those assets. I share this because you know, as we're thinking about 30, you know, tax credits going away and you're losing potentially 30% uh, 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 tax credit on, on a system that you otherwise would have had, 
you know, you're looking for a way. We talked about cutting costs in, in businesses and equipment so that you could you know, provide a lower cost service. These virtual power plants, these, the, you know, the money that you can make on that, that helps on your return on investment. So I'd say look in your area and see if any of your uh, utilities are participating in these because it can be a real boon uh, and economic value to you. Maybe you weren't considering getting batteries, but you know, if you're getting paid that $1,500 a year from the utility for them to use your battery and you get backup, well, that's a really good investment for you, you know, long term. So we're really excited about that. We're working with a lot of different utilities, more than 30 programs across the country, and that's growing rapidly. We're going to have a lot of new partnerships we're announcing in the coming months with big utility players. Um, so something to look out for and uh, something that can provide real value to, uh, to homeowners and the grid. Great, great. Well, you know, the technology is always advancing, Andy. It's never cool. a dull moment here. So it's cool. uh, good stuff. <laughs> Well, Andy, thanks Appreciate for taking time job. to chat with us. This has been a chat with Andy Newbold from Enphase Energy. Uh, folks, as always, if you're getting good value from the videos that you watch on this channel, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. Uh, also, go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. That way, as we have new videos like this, whether they be interviews or new product announcements, uh, either way, it'll come up on your feed and that way you can stay up to date with everything. But that does it for today's video. I thank you all for spending some more time on the Solar Search channel. And as always, I'm Joe Ordia here, encouraging you to get prepared and be empowered. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next episode.